for a subject like demons or devil worship, you would think that it would be a more popular topic for horror films. With something so creepy and foreboding, it lends itself perfectly to horror. You can have the cult aspect like Rosemary's Baby or the more recent The House of the Devil. You can do possession like the Exorcist movies. You can even go straight up Antichrist like The Omen, Lost Souls, or The Ninth Gate. Movies like this have a very ominous feel about them, as if the gravity of the subject matter is weighing heavily on the production. Hack o' Lantern, on the other hand, takes this subject matter and goes in the complete opposite direction. Hack o' Lantern is a 1988 horror and unintentional comedy from director Jag Mundra. The movie starts off with a guy visiting his grandson on Halloween. He gives him a pumpkin, this little cheesy skeleton, and a pentagram necklace. It's just for you. Something for me? Because I'm special? Yes, Tommy. Because you are very, very special. Oh, bad touch. Tommy's carving his pumpkin and accidentally cuts his hand. Yeah, yeah. Give it. Oh. Tommy, we have to wash that. But oh, Mom, I like the taste of blood. Grandpa says it's good for me. Does Grandpa think he's this guy? His mother freaks out because Tommy's grandpa gave him a pumpkin, and his father is so mad that he blows one of his lines. We've been over this God knows how many times, Amanda, and I still don't understand. Why, why does it continue to single out Tom over the other children, hmm? Tommy's dad goes to confront the grandfather. Tommy was never yours. He belongs to something greater than you could ever imagine. Tommy's dad interrupts a satanic ritual and one of the group kills him with a hammer. You would think they would have used a ceremonial dagger or something, but nope, hammer. They then put him in his car and torch it to make it look like it was an accident. How many times did they have to light this match? I'm just gonna get this out of the way now. Grandpa is one of the least scary villains ever. We don't like trespassers here. You should not come, Bill. Unless you're afraid of Harvey Firestein. <laughs> Cut to 13 years later, and Tommy still has the pentagram necklace he got from his grandpa. It's Halloween, and grandpa is telling Tommy that tonight he's going to become all-powerful. Then he cackles. A lot. <laughs> Wait, are they supposed to be doing devil horns? This is devil horns. This is sign language for I love you. Tommy's grandpa drives away, and who's he making this face at? Is he mad at the audience? Tommy's mom confronts her father and makes the universal motion for big boobs. They show a flashback to her wedding day and imply that her father raped her, and he's really Tommy's father. Ew. How is he able to do this anyway? He's not a really large guy. I'm pretty sure she could have fought him off. Tommy's sister Vera is taking a bath, and her friend Beth plays a trick on her. Tommy's younger brother, Roger, grew up to be a cop. They're investigating a series of grave robberies. There's been another grave overturned. Sure, Sarge. I know it's a grave situation, but I'll get to the bottom of it. <coughs> However, tonight he's in charge of watching over the local Halloween party. Seriously? This town has their parties chaperoned by the cops? Oh, they must be a blast. Tommy! Can you hear me? Can you feel me near you? Tommy puts on his Walkman to rock out to some music. Okay, now he's in a music video for a song called The Devil's Son. Shoot the Devil's Son! Real subtle. What the hell is going on? This voodoo dancer chick starts shooting lasers from her eyes and makes the band disappear. Then she somehow decapitates Tommy with a pitchfork. Tommy's mother tells Roger she's worried about Tommy because he hangs around with a girl who doesn't believe in pants. Vera introduces Beth to Roger. Vera seems to have a nice little friend there. Line. Line. I wish Vera and Tommy and you would stay together. Roger's trying to talk some sense into Tommy. Tommy shows Roger his demonic altar. You know, it's hard to be afraid of the son of the devil when he drinks Coors Light. Someone in a devil's costume heads over to Tommy's girlfriend's house. She lets him in and then she shows him her Halloween costume. The mystery person then kills her with a pitchfork. Roger asks out Beth and they go for a ride. 
Tommy catches Vera trying to have sex with her boyfriend, and I think they mix this music just a little too loud for this scene. Brian runs into the guy in the devil costume in the cemetery and gets killed. Grandpa's starting the demonic ritual. I love how his demonic uniform is just a cloak over a plaid shirt and tough skins. Roger and Beth go to the cemetery to investigate the reports of grave robbers. While searching for the grave robbers, Beth gets excited and has sex with Roger right in the middle of the cemetery. Listen to this music. It's like this was a clean, wholesome love scene. They just did it on a first date in a cemetery next to an open grave. Roger drops Beth off to get ready for the party. Lady Gaga makes a grand entrance and starts stripping for a reason that's never explained. You know, for such a low-budget movie, the director somehow managed to convince every woman in the movie to take their clothes off. And that's pretty impressive. So meanwhile, in the middle of this horror movie, they decide to grind the whole thing to a halt so this comedian can do several uninterrupted minutes of the worst stand-up you've ever heard. Didn't you see the stripper in there? You didn't see the stripper? What's wrong with you guys? You, don't, you should have seen her. She was great. <laughs> she had like the biggest blue eyes you've ever seen. <laughs> and boy, you know, she reminded me of one of those girls from the girly magazine. Did you ever see those girls? And the girl, like my favorite part in there is, is the naked girl. I love the naked girl. Did anyone think this was funny? Then the movie returns and that guy is never seen from or heard from again. Thankfully. Beth takes Vera to the spot in the cemetery where she had sex with her brother. Why would Vera want to see this? They find Brian's body and think Tommy did it. Vera goes into the barn to confront Tommy and interrupts the satanic ritual. They tie her up and they try to convince Tommy to kill her, but at the last minute he realizes what he's doing and turns against them. Back at the party, Vera and Beth tell Roger what just happened. The guy in the devil costume shows up at the party and kills this lady for some reason. He then jumps out of a closet and kills Beth. I like how she mistakes him for Tommy, even though Tommy is like two feet taller. The guy in the devil costume takes off his mask, and of course, it's Grandpa. Another guy in a devil outfit shows up, and they get into the lamest final battle ever. The guy's trying to leave, and Roger shoots him before he can take off. The guy in the devil costume wanders out in the woods and takes the mask off, and it turns out it's really the mother. Tommy finds her and apologizes for everything he did before she dies. Grandpa is dying and then passes his evil into Roger. So now Roger is the head of the devil worshippers. That doesn't make any sense. All he had to do was touch him and say a few words. If he can pass the evil to anyone, then why was he so intent on Tommy? This movie loves padding. Whether it's the really long driving shots, the overly long intro, oh my god, this opening is going on forever, the comedian, they really tried to push the runtime as much as they could. The movie went by a few different titles. The Damning and Halloween Night. One night where they were still filming, the actor Jeff Brown, who played Roger, suggested they change the name to hack lantern a title that really suits this movie. They were really proud of getting High Pike to play Grandpa. They even put his name before the title in the credits. He was best known for his small part in Blade Runner, and even though he was the big name in the film, he was the worst actor in the movie by far. His accent was awful, and it was trying to be scary, but it just ended up as laughable. Yeah. Now, your husband came to us. He shouldn't have done that. You have intruded upon the ceremony of blood. This is not just any Halloween. Gregory Scott Cummins played Tommy. He was in a movie I reviewed not too long ago called Blood Games. He's had a very solid career with 76 titles to his credit, mostly from TV. The spiky blonde Nora was played by porn star Jenna Fine. What do you think she's more embarrassed by? Appearing in Hacko Lantern or Butt Slammers 11, Asshole to Asshole? The band in the middle of the movie is a rock band called DC LaCroix. On top of having one of the greatest headshots in IMDb history, Jag Mundra has an impressive 31 titles to his credit. While none of his movies are great, he did make movies like Night Eyes and Wild Cactus, which were cable favorites in the 90s. This movie stinks. 
However, if you're a bad movie connoisseur, there is much enjoyment to be had. I'm not really selling this very well. Okay, let me try this. There are various degrees of entertainingly bad movies. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, Troll 2, Catwoman. This is one of those movies that would have been perfect for Mystery Science Theater. On the bad entertainment scale, it fits in somewhere between Just One of the Guys and Manos the Hands of Fate. <laughs> ceremony will begin at sundown. The ceremony will allow you to prove yourself to your creator. Master. 